Hey guys, let's talk about essential bindings for the hip, as well as the special options settings. These are all the basic things you need for your very first flight, just so that you can get in the cockpit, go for a fly, and hopefully not end in disaster. Uh, so from the main menu, and we're going to need to be here because that's the only place you can access the special options, is to go to this options cog at the top of the screen, and then over to the special tab. From there, scroll down, find Mi 8 MTV2, and then I'm going to walk you through what all of these are. That's been a fairly popular request. Uh, so control helper is just the controls overlay that you see me bring up in my videos. You can bring that up anytime with right control and enter. But if you want it up by default, just check this box. Rudder trimmer is going to be super useful for people who don't have pedals. So if you're using a twist axis on your joystick or like the, um, the paddles on the backside of the Thrustmaster uh, T16K throttle, on that one, if you're using that or some other solution that you have for rudder, uh, helicopters tend to require a little bit of rudder, or I should say anti-torque, uh, input almost consistently. Um, it's very rare that you don't need any whatsoever, except for when you're in very fast forward flight. Um, so it can be pretty tiring on the wrist if you've got a twist axis to hold a little bit of left twist or right twist all the time, and it's not going to be good for you. So. In a case like that, you might want to enable rudder trimmer, and then when you trim the aircraft, it'll take into position the uh, that axis as well as your cyclic positions and uh, allow you to return that to center. So you could let go of the twist or let go of the paddles or whatever, and it should, um, it should hold that position in game for you. I don't use it because I have um, decent pedals, but if you have some other setup, you might find that valuable. Autopilot adjustment is your uh, autopilot has dials on it that allow you to make little minor course corrections as you fly. Uh, you can do this yourself, but being a three person helicopter, typically you'd have a person dedicated for that sort of thing. Um, because we don't in our game, you can have the AI do it for you. Personally, I find it easier just to flip the autopilot off and back on again. I have a binding for it on the base of my throttle. Um, and that will reset the autopilot and accomplish more or less the same thing without the unpredictability of the AI trying to accommodate you without really knowing what you're up to. So try it, but you might find it weird. Um, I find it easier just to bind autopilot off and autopilot on and just cycle it. Trimmer mode, I've done an entire video on trim already, so I'm not going to go too deep into this, but typically you've got default or central position trimmer mode. Default is nice because you never lose cyclic authority, but not so great because it'll make your helicopter wobble when you trim. Central position trimmer mode is nice because you won't get that wobble, but you do lose cyclic authority until you bring your cyclic back to center. And so there can be some issues sometimes around that. So it's a trade-off either way. And then joystick without springs and force feedback is going to be for people with fancy joysticks that will stay put when you let go. If yours doesn't stay put when you let go, um, you could do that, for example, with the dry clutch system on the VKB stick, but then you require a lot of force to get it moving because there's no clutch release button. I've tried. It's um, it's super cool at first because the joystick stays put when you let go and works just like it should, but there's no way to, to ease that up. And so you have to use a lot of force to kind of move the joystick around and it's super hard for being precise. So unless you've got a fancy cyclic designed for this, you're probably not using that third position. Anyway, there's a whole video if you want to know more on that, you can check it out. Gun camera on or off. This is normally off. I've got it on because I've been working on weapon tutorial videos as well. Um, you can also set it only for tracks. So what this does, there's a camera mounted on one of the pylons and it will capture video whenever your trigger is held. And then um, you can set it to on if you want to see that come up in the corner of your screen as you're firing and it'll show you the camera's perspective. If you set it to only for tracks, that video will only come up when you watch the replay which is probably a little more realistic. You'd be watching that during review, not during your actual flight. You wouldn't be able to see the camera then. Um, but for the sake of demonstration, I have it on so I can demonstrate what that does in my weapon tutorials. Max FOV adjustment. This is one of those things that you'll wish every module had. If you have wide monitors or three monitors or whatever your setup is, you can adjust whatever the maximum field of view is when you zoom out. I think the default's 120. I haven't touched it. Um, I've been happy with it there. Give it a try, see what you guys think, but um, I think for the most part, most people won't change that. Customized cockpit, this will be, uh, by default, you'll have default, which is Russian. You'll have um, Chinese or Chinese with dirty glass, default with dirty glass, and English and English with dirty glass. So most people will probably want to pick English. 
Um, I downloaded the black cockpit by DevRim from the user files. It's linked in every one of my videos in the description. You can find it there. Just scroll down a little bit. Just a personal preference thing. I like the aesthetic. It's totally up to you guys what you use. Cockpit camera shake. This is, I believe, superseded by Track IR. Just because um, I guess the, the mantra is if the user has something else that controls their head tracking, you should never take the camera away from them. It's especially important in VR, but they apply it to Track IR as well. Um, so I don't think the camera shakes at all for me. If I didn't have Track IR, I'd probably be reducing that slightly. I didn't. I don't typically like camera shake as much, or at least not a lot of it. Um, but play around with that. If you guys have head tracking or VR, you won't notice it anyway. Collective uh, move threshold for altitude hold reset. So this is for your autopilot. If you're using the altitude hold channel, um, this determines how much you need to move your collective before that channel gets turned off. And it goes from 1% all the way up to 30%. I don't use the altitude hold channel almost ever. Uh, I find that once you get your collective set in a good position, it'll stay there. Your altitude won't, won't change. Um, I, I don't need it. So I don't use it. So uh, I don't really have much use for this, but you can play around with it. Somewhere in that one to five range is probably going to be good for most people. Collective break mode. Um, this one is going to be again related to your altitude hold and you can have it so that by default moving the collective will just disengage your altitude hold, but there's also an option for hydro lock where um, you have to depress the hydro lock key. I don't actually know what the binding is for that, uh, but it has you have to depress it to move the collective. And that's if you wanted to have the collective locked in place. Um, probably not going to be useful for most of us. Our hardware doesn't really support it. But that's it. That's pretty much it for special settings. So, uh, yeah. From there, we'll head over to the controls tab and we'll set up some essential bindings. All right. So on the controls tab, you're going to want to go to this drop down here, first of all, and find Mi 8 MTV2 SIM. There's other options for game gunner and track IR gunner. You just want SIM. By default, you're going to get this great big list of every single binding sorted alphabetically, and it's super hard to read. Uh, and sure, you can click on the drop down next to it and filter by category, for example, the ARC-9 control panel, and just get those bindings. I find this harder to navigate. I like to click on this foldable view checkbox up here. And then I get everything in a nice expandable tree view, and I can just click on the category I want here and see all the stuff that's underneath it. All of our bindings, or at least the vast majority of the ones we care about for this, are going to be under Axis commands, with a couple of exceptions. If you've ever bound anything in DCS, you also know where this is going. By default, DCS will bind uh, Collective, or Throttle, in Fixed Wing, Pitch, Roll, and Rudder to all of your devices. Unless you're flying something with something like the Thrustmaster Warthog, which has defaults defined by ED, then you might have defaults that make sense, or they might not, but at least they'll have actual defaults. If the device is not something they have predefined presets for, you're going to get this. So in this case, like my collective axis, sure, it's uh, it's bound to my throttle device, but the right axis, like for my actual throttle, is not bound to collective like it should be. Uh, my pedals, they it's bound to some axis that doesn't exist on my pedals. It's not my toe brakes, and it's not the main rudder axis. And on my joystick, it's not the actual stick. It's not the slew hat for uh, TGPs. It's, again, some axis that I don't even know what that is, but it's bound to all three devices and bound incorrectly in all of the cases. So I want to get rid of that. Uh, in the case of the throttle, I'm also going to want to get rid of pitch and roll because the throttle shouldn't be controlling that. I should be getting rid of rudder. I just want to keep this collective, but I need to rebind it. So the easiest way to do it, frankly, is to go to this little down arrow and go to reset, uh, sorry, to clear all categories. It'll ask if you're sure, you hit yes, and boom, they go away. So you can do that for the other two devices as well. Or if like in the case of the joystick, the cyclic, Y and X are already set correctly, you can just remove the ones that aren't or that you don't need. So you can right click on it and go clear combo. And then same thing for rudder, right click, clear combo. For the pedals, I'm just going to um, clear all categories, and then I can bind them from scratch. So we've got um, four or actually five things in this section that we really want to bind. We're going to start with a collective, and that's going to be on your physical throttle. So double click on it, push your throttle forward. It should come up and say something like Joy X right here. 
Um, now, if you're, if you're, a, hmm, there are two kinds of people who uh, fly helicopters with a throttle controller. There are the kind who look at it like throttle goes forward is the same as collective comes up. There are also people who look at it like, well, because you, to lift a collective, you actually pull the lever up. They want that pulling motion, that feeling of pulling on something instead of pushing on something. And so they invert this axis so that they pull their throttle back from being all the way forward. So by default, they put their throttle all the way forward and then they pull it back to add collective. I don't think that way personally. That doesn't make sense to my brain. My brain uh, links pushing the throttle forward with more power or more collective. And so I leave it in the default. But if you do want to invert it, if you are one of those people who wants that pulling motion, then you would right click on it, go into tune combo axis and click invert. Done. So now you can pull your throttle and it will um, add power, add collective as you pull the throttle back towards you. So that's personal preference, no judgment if that's the way you like to fly. Um, personally, it doesn't make sense to my brain. <laughs> it feels backwards to do it that way. So uh, I just leave mine uninverted. Cyclic pitch, cyclic roll, they should be bound typically fairly well because usually your pitch and roll report as joy Y and joy X. But if they don't, you can double click on them, push your stick forward and backwards and you should get joy Y. And again for X, double click, move your stick left and right and you should get joy X showing up. Uh, rudder, or as it should be in this helicopter and most of the helicopters in the game and coming to the game, anti-torque. Um, a rudder is the actual control surface that you have on the vertical stabilizer in a plane or on a helicopter such as the Ka-50. Uh, we don't have a rudder. We don't actually have that moving flap, that hinged flap on the back of our helicopters. We just have a tail rotor. And in that case, our axis should be called anti-torque, but I'm mostly just being pedantic. Just, just be aware that I guess rudder isn't technically the correct name. As long as you understand what the function is, that it moves the nose left and right, you're good. So for that one, um, we want to bind that to our pedals and we just push the pedals left and right and we'll get joy RZ. If you're not using pedals and you have instead a twist axis, you might bind it on your stick instead. One more in this section before we move on and that's the corrector up here. This is kind of, think of this more like an engine RPM throttle. So as part of your startup, you'll have this all the way left or down. And then when you're ready to, once your engines are up and running and you're ready to basically spool it up and start your generators, you'll move the corrector all the way right or all the way up. Um, and you'll want this, I don't know if you necessarily need this bound. I like to have it bound. I have, the, I have enough axes for it. But typically once you're flying, you're just going to leave it all the way right and ignore it. So you probably don't strictly need it, but I would recommend it. So I, again, I bind it there. And that's pretty much it. All right. Now we need to talk about dead zones. Um, I've actually got another one we're going to have to talk about in a minute. But what I recommend you do is take your joystick and push it all the way to one corner. So I've got mine down and left. And then just let go. Let it snap back to center. Do those white lines go away? If I do that from here. Mine go away at least on the pitch axis on the roll axis it's not entirely going away and you can see there's a little bit left over so i have two choices here one of them would be for me to go and adjust my dry clutches in my joystick because i can do that i can adjust the amount of resistance and uh, it's centering so mine actually will get stuck a little bit just before it centers or i can go in here and i can add a dead zone so i can go right click tune combo axis and then i can set a small dead zone of say you know one or two percent and then when i let go of the joystick as long as wherever it stops is on the flat part that you can see there, if I set the dead zone bigger, as long as it's on this flat part here, wherever the joystick stops, then um, the game won't detect any movement from it. If it's on the hill like this, it's gonna be constantly trying to uh, roll the helicopter when you, even when you let go of your joystick. So depending on what joystick you have, you may need to set a dead zone as much as 10%. Uh, it'll depend on how old it is, what kind it is. My old X56, joystick for example had about an eight percent dead zone because it just um, you let it go back to center and it would kind of flop to one side a little bit and i needed to add eight percent dead zone because it sat somewhere over here and that was the only way i could really get rid of that other than having to hold the joystick in the center myself 
Um, I'm lucky enough that my VKB stick is precise. I don't need a dead zone. I would just have to make a very slight adjustment to my dry clutches, which is something I should do. They're a little bit too tight right now. So that's that. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit, we have a couple more to bind in this section. Uh, throttle left and throttle right, these are your engine condition levers or ECLs. Um, if you have spare bindings for them, if you're on the X56 throttle, for example, you have those two little volume knobs. I use those. Not Again, not essential. They're going to stay in the center position basically all the time. They only ever get raised for emergency situations. But if you have the bindings, it's not a bad idea. So my throttle left, I'm going to bind here. Throttle right, I'm going to bind here. And then we have two more, wheel brake and zoom view. So I'm going to do zoom view first, since that's also on my throttle. This, I, you're going to need this in everything you fly, but I recommend having something easy to use, easy to access. So you can zoom in on instrument panels, across the cockpit, on stuff on the ground, whatever. You should have a zoom view access and it should be easy to use. I know this is challenging depending on your hardware setup, but um, if you have anything at all you can use, I really recommend a zoom view access. Uh, now, I know that mine jitters a bit. If I hit OK here, you might actually be able to, yeah, you might be able to see it even when I return it to center. There's a little bit of a white line, and sometimes it will flicker bigger and smaller. Um, and that's the jitter from my potentiometer in this thing getting old. And so if I jump into game, even with my zoom view axis centered, my camera view will shake in and out. And I know that I need to set an, a, a dead zone on it. So again, right click tune combo axis and I set like a 4% dead zone on it and hit OK. And that should get rid of it next time I move it and return it to center. The white line goes away and we're all set. Very last one is wheel brake. Now, if you have uh, a pinky lever, an analog pinky lever like the VKB stick does, this is easy. You just bind it and you're done. Um, something to note is that by default in most modules, not all but most, brake axes will be inverted by default. So what this means is when my pinky lever is released, my brakes will be engaged. And then when I engage my pinky lever, it will disengage the brakes in game, exactly the backwards behavior of what I want. So I'm going to preemptively go in here and invert that one as well. Oops, there. So now my brakes should operate the right way. And that's it for essential axes. There is a little trick that I use. Um, if you don't have, okay, so there's two things about the wheel brake that I should talk about. All right, if you don't have an analog axis for wheel brake, you can also just search for wheel and you'll find uh, a button version of it called wheel brake bound to W on the keyboard. And you can do the same thing. Double click on that spot, press the button on your joystick, and that'll work as your wheel brake. And that's going to be what you're going to find on most Western type joysticks. On the Eastern ones, you'll usually have an analog axis. Uh, there is also a parking brake, but there's only a button version of it. So in my case, I thought, well, I don't really want to bind another button just for parking brake. And I've got these toe brakes on my pedals that I'm not using because they don't do anything. There are no toe brakes in the hip. So a neat little trick that I found is to bind the toe brakes to the brake, but then not invert them. So I do that, press one toe brake, do it again, press another toe brake. You can have multiple bindings to the same thing. And because I'm not inverting them, this sort of makes them work like e-brakes. So if I push either of my toe brakes, it will disengage the brake in game. And then when I release my toe brakes, it will re-engage the brake. So just by tapping one of my toe brakes, I can set the brake and hold it without having a binding for the parking brake. And I find this super useful so that I don't have to sit there and hold the pinky lever the whole time. Again, this is going to depend on your setup, what you have available to you. If you're not using pedals, I guess that's probably not an option. But if you do have pedals and you have a pinky lever with an analog axis or a button you can use for the brake, it's kind of a neat little trick. So I realized later that I forgot to talk about axis curves. These are optional, will depend on your preferences, your hardware, how new you are to helicopters in general, that sort of thing. Um, but in case you want to do them, uh, in case you happen to find that controlling the helicopter is just a little bit too sensitive, too wobbly, too uh, touchy. You can kind of dampen that and make it a little bit simpler to make small, precise movements around the center point of your joystick or your pedals uh, just by applying some basic axis curves. So quickly, um, you'll probably want to leave Collective alone. 
you'll want to put curves on pitch and roll that match. In most cases, I imagine you wouldn't want to have different curves. And then you'd probably have a fairly similar curve for the rudder or your anti-torque pedals. Uh, so if you right-click on it, same way we did before, go into Tune Combo Axis, and in the same place that we would normally you know, do inverting or whatever, or set a dead zone, you can also set this curvature. Now if you set, say, a positive 10 to 20, so let's start with something like 15. Uh, you can kind of see how it'll curve here like this. Now if I start moving my joystick, what happens is it doesn't move up as much around the center point or down as much right away around the center point it'll wait till I apply more force and then it'll start to come back down and if I make this curve a little more pronounced like a 40 or something like that you can see it's almost flat around the center it really doesn't come up or down much until I've moved my joystick about half of the way and then it moves very quickly from there so if you're having issues with sensitivity around the center point you're having trouble hovering or landing or making precise movements around that center point. This is going to be useful for the Thrustmaster Warthog guys too uh, because of that really stiff centering spring. You might want to add a curve and my recommendation is to start with about plus 15. Don't go any higher than plus 20 and um, less is better typically. But it'll depend on what your hardware is, what your comfort level is. You know, you might even want to go higher. You might want to go to plus 25. Um, my recommendation is if you can try not to exceed plus 20 you'll find that it it mucks with the response and gets really non-linear in a hurry and beyond 20 so uh, yeah try 15 see how it goes move it up or down depending on uh, how it feels and you'll want to apply the exact same curve to your cyclic roll tune combo axis again plus 15 and that should make it easier for you to make precise movements um, the same will go for pedals in tune combo axis for those uh, if you're finding that they are really, really twitchy around that center point and you just want to have a little more precision, a little more control, same, exactly the same thing applies there. Set about a plus 15 curve and then either add more or remove some depending on um, what your preferences are, what your hardware is like. So that might help you, it might not, but it is a fairly easy thing to do. Um, yeah, that's about it. All right, and that's it for essential axes. We've got a couple of buttons as well that I would consider essential for flight, and then you're more or less all ready to go, and we'll hop into the game after that to see how things are working. So uh, search for trim, first of all. You'll find two buttons, reset and trimmer button. So the trimmer button in the hip should be something fairly accessible. On, the, on my X56 joystick, I bound it to the silver hat, the nipple hat, uh, down, I think, and then reset. I bound up on my X, or sorry, on my um, VKB stick. I bind the trimmer button to my CMS hat depress, which is where your thumb is. Um, the X56 unfortunately has a joystick there. The X55 had a button there, which was nice. The reset button I then bind to my nose wheel steering button, since I really don't have any other use for that in this helicopter. You guys can put them wherever you want them. Those are just some suggestions. They should be easily accessible and on your joystick. You're going to be using them a lot. Um, quick note about trim, just because it's relevant while we're talking about it. It doesn't work like trim in a fixed wing where you have, you know, uh, ailerons left and right or elevators up and down. Uh, it's just a put the stick in a position, hit the trim button, and the game will consider that the new center point. So that when you let go of your physical joystick, the game still reads it like it is in the position you left it in when you hit trim. So it's nice for holding the joystick in forward flight or for setting it up for takeoffs or for landings when you need to hold constant pressure in a very specific position, but that can be very tiring and fatiguing for the pilot and you just want to let go of your actual physical joystick. So that's trim. Um, the last one is pause. And if we search again here, just type in pause, you'll get two of them, active pause and regular pause. Regular pause is kind of like hitting escape without bringing up the menu. It'll pause the entire sim. You can still switch cameras, pan around, take screenshots. Super useful for that. I bind that on my throttle. And then active pause is the one where you freeze your helicopter in the air or in its current position. You can still flip switches, turn things on and off, move your control surfaces, but the helicopter won't move. And this is super useful as a learning tool. So I bind that and you can, for example, fly into the air, get yourself pointed at something, and then mess around with your weapons panels. Try setting up your guns and your rockets and your grenade launchers and whatever else 
flip between them, try different modes, and you're already pointing at the target, and you just pull the trigger to shoot um, without having to fly laps around and make new passes each time. Active pause is super helpful. It's also going to be really nice for us to test that our controls are working as intended. So that's it for essential controls. Um, you've got your corrector, your collective, your pitch, your roll, your rudder, which should be anti-torque, uh, your throttle left and right as optional, wheel brake, and zoom view. Then you have your trim and your pause and active pause. That's all. Uh, we're not going to get into things like radio or weapons or navigation or all that other stuff. Those will be in those videos. This is just what you need to get flying around. So hit OK. All right, so the easiest way to get into, into the game and to test this stuff out, at least in my opinion, is to use the mission editor. If you use instant action or create fast mission or whatever, you have less control over what you spawn with and what else is going on in the map and all that stuff. So what I do is I just open the mission editor here. Uh, and then I'll, if you haven't been in the mission editor yet, it'll prompt you to either open or create new. So you would go to new, you'll get this screen here. Pick any of the maps that you fly on that you have and then hit OK. Uh, so as far as now placing a helicopter, we just have this big empty blank map. We can put the helicopter anywhere we want. So we can scroll in and just put it right here on the ground. Or if we want to be, you know, not in the middle of a forest, for example, we could put it over here. Or we could put it at one of the airfields. Um, so, you know, I can put it down at Batumi. And then we have a couple of options. So just any place in the map that you think looks interesting, zoom in, click on the helicopter icon on the left there, add or modify helicopter group and then click the spot you want the helicopter to spawn. So you can put it right there, you could put it basically anywhere, and by default this will be an air spawn. So the next thing we'll do is change that to a ground spawn. So on the right here, on the bottom half under type is turning point. Change that to either take off from parking hot, if you want to take off from one of the parking stalls at an airfield, and that would move you here. And then you can change the parking stall number on the left, so I can move myself over, put myself in number nine if I want to, and then I can choose where I spawn. If I don't want to spawn in one of these aprons here, I can also choose take off from ground hot. And then I can freely drag this thing, oops, uh, make sure it's on edit, otherwise you'll add waypoints. But then you can just drag it around and drop it anywhere, and as long as the ground is flat, you'll be able to spawn there. The nice thing about helicopters, so we can spawn right next to the runway. So we'll do that. Um, a couple of things to change now in the top half here, make sure you set the type in the top there to Mi 8 MTV2. Otherwise, you won't be flying the right helicopter. Set the skill to either client or player. Uh, client, if you're going to be using this with friends or whatever, and you want to have, or you want to have multiple different helicopters and you want to choose from them when you load up the mission. Or if you're just going to load the one and that's all you want, just set it to player. Uh, if you go into the payload tab, that's right here. A couple of things I would recommend you do if you're going to go for a little joyride. Uh, take off the external hard points unless you plan to play around with weapons. If you're not planning on playing around with weapons, take off the external hard points. Set your fuel to about 60%, 65%, somewhere in there. You really don't need more than that to fly almost anywhere. Uh, and then on the additional properties, the three dots over here, remove the exhaust IR suppressors and the additional armor. This will save you some weight as well as uh, restore some engine power that the IR suppressors kind of steal from you. Um, that's about it as far as setting up a, a little joyride or a fam flight or whatever just to go and fly around and try things out. If you want to do weapons, put the external hard points back on. That's the uh, pylons that you can see right there. If you uh, uncheck that box, those won't be there. You won't be able to mount weapons. So up to you depending on what it is you're doing. Once you're ready to go, just click on flight at the top and then fly mission or control P is the hotkey for it and it will ask if you want to save the changes. If you want to keep this mission around, hit yes, give it a name, save it somewhere. I've got a whole bunch of sandbox missions, so I'm just going to hit no. I don't care about saving this for later. I can remake it if I need to. Um, then it'll give you your details, and you just hit start. Wait for it to load, and it should launch you right into the game. All right, so now that we've loaded, we're in the game before we hit fly, just do a quick once over on your controls. Make sure your throttle is all the way down. Um, that, your, that your inputs are all basically centered otherwise. Otherwise, like you don't want to launch into the air right off the bat. And if your throttle is up by default, you're just going to take off and then tip over and blow up. And that's not fun. So hit fly. Make sure everything's good. So now the first thing you're going to want to do is 
bring up that controls indicator. So that's right control and enter. Now you should be able to see the position of your cyclic as that diamond up there. And you can see that your actual cyclic moves around with it in the cockpit. And it should go right and left or left and right as I did and aft and forward in matching with your actual physical joystick in your hand. If they don't, you need to invert your axes. Um, we can do the same thing for collective. However, because as we add collective, we're going to lift off the ground, hit your active pause button. Now you're safe to lift your collective all the way up. Make sure it goes with your throttle and comes back down again. And this way you won't lift off the ground because your active paused. You can also check your engine correction levers and adjust them. They should be in the middle. Mine are backwards, so I'm going to invert those because I would expect them to go the other way. And then also your corrector. And mine is also inverted, so I need to swap my corrector and my engine condition levers. So I'll go into adjust, oops, not options, adjust controls, access commands, and I can find my oops, corrector is up here. Right click on it, tune combo access, invert, OK. And then the exact same thing for throttle left, tune combo, invert, OK. And throttle right, tune combo, invert, OK. So now my corrector moves the way I expect. My engine condition levers move the way I expect. And my other controls are matching my inputs. And I can see the feet moving the same direction as my actual feet do in my house. Um, the next thing is check that your trim is working. So you can pull your joystick somewhere, hit your trim button. You should hear click, click, and then you can let go. And now I'm not touching my actual joystick, but my in-game one is still over there. And I can do that again, put it over here, trim it, let go, and it will stay there until I hit trim reset, which snaps it back. So if all of those things are working and they all seem to be mapped the right way, check your zoom view axis, make sure you can zoom in and out to where you're happy. Then take your active pause off and it's time to go. So now you have everything you need to take off, to fly around, to try the helicopter out and hopefully not explode immediately upon loading into the game. Uh, if you want to learn how to take off and hover and all that kind of stuff, I do have videos for all of those as well. Uh, or you can just wing it, see how it goes. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, if I missed anything, I'm sure I did, please let me know below or uh, if I got anything wrong as well, same idea. And I'll see you guys next time.